Good evening, CLI family. I am Puven Reddy, and I am married to Charlene Reddy. We are both volunteers with CLI, and we will be hosting this meeting here tonight together. I want to thank all of you all for being with us tonight. I know you all have busy schedules. Thank you for making the time. It is such a privilege and an honor to be able to fellowship with you all of you all tonight. Before we begin, let's begin with a little prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather here in the harbor of your safety, we thank you for fellowship and family. We ask that you will strengthen us, restore us, and inspire us with your love. Would you fill us with your peace, so that as we journey onwards, we will pour out your love and your grace to others. We ask that our souls would catch the winds of your spirit, so that we would take your promises to all those around us. We thank you for every we thank everyone for gathering here tonight. Thank you that you know each of us by name and cause us to walk with you. We say that we are dependent on you and our trust is in you completely. Lord, please allow the Holy Spirit to enter this meeting tonight and give us the wisdom to make great decisions and be spiritually impactful. Amen. I'm going to now hand over to Charlene. She has a quick message for you on spiritual warfare. Hello CLI family. Thank you for joining us tonight. Today I would love to share a little message on spiritual warfare. God does use trials to draw us closer to Him and sometimes uses them as disciplines to correct us as a good father does for the children he loves. But we can't know in a given trial what exactly God is up to. In Romans 8.28 He reminds us that God works all things together for good for his people. It doesn't say that all things are good or that trials are always disciplinary. It just says that whatever befalls us, God has a plan and has already figured out how he will weave the darker threads into a beautiful tapestry. Many things that happen to us, like sickness, disease, prolonged battles of various kinds are just the result of living in a fallen world. But these aren't just random accidents. God never allows any trial that he hasn't already figured out how to turn to our profit, our ultimate good that Romans 8.28 is talking about is our salvation. In my own trials I can say that there was no way I could have figured out what God was doing. I would have been wrong to conclude that God sent. I would have been wrong to conclude that God sent them to punish me or because I didn't have enough faith. But I also would have been wrong to have thought that they were just accidents. Looking back, I can see at least in some cases, how God used them to make me cling to him more. But not always. There is no promise in scripture that believers will be protected from the common evils that go with living in a fallen sinful world. The promise that we have again and again in scripture is that God works all things together for good for his people. That's our ultimate salvation not our health and happiness here and now. We might contract a lethal disease just like anyone else, but the difference is that we have a greater hope, not of prolonging our life as children of the flesh, but of the resurrection of the dead at Christ's bodily return. Think of the horrific massacre in Charleston Church in 2015. White supremacist Dylan Roof killed nine believers in the middle of a Bible study. But Christians have been killed for various reasons throughout history. Then there's the stuff that we all go through, believer and unbeliever alike, just because we live in a fallen world. You probably know people you've heard the frightening words from a doctor. You have cancer. Look, this is not as good as it gets. This present age is dominated by sin and death. But Jesus Christ has conquered as the beginning of the new creation. As it turns out, the protection and security that God promises us now 
are far greater than anything that the Department of Homeland Security or insurance companies or our doctors can offer us. Regardless of what happens to us in this life, we have the promise that this life is just a vapor, a mist that fades quickly in any case. We have a home with the triune God forever, in a joyful feast that never ends. Romans 5 verses 1 to 5 says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him we have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. We have two major takeaways here. First, God has a purpose for every trial that comes your way and he will make sure that somehow it serves your salvation. Second, neither you nor anybody else can figure out what that purpose is in the moment and maybe never. Isn't it good to know that we have a father who is powerful enough to control every circumstance and good enough to turn tragedies into triumphs of his grace? I hope that this gives you comfort, even though you still cry out with the psalmist, How long, O Lord? God is delaying Christ's return to make all things new until all of his chosen people from every nation and language are brought into the safety of his kingdom. Aren't you glad that he's given a space for you to come to Christ? Until the last of his sheep are brought into his fold, we will be enduring this present evil age. But we have his promise that in him we will rule and reign on the earth forever without pain, suffering or death. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlene. Before we close in prayer and give our benediction, I just want to say God has given us a beautiful platform in CLI. And within C with CLI, we can strengthen our walk with God and become strong leaders and can help to grow the kingdom of God. It will be difficult to reach our ministry goals, but we have to endure and just remember, as a volunteer team, we are always ever ready to help when needed. Thank you all for taking time out of all your busy schedules to be a part of this meeting tonight. Just remember, Pastor Rudy, Charlene and I will be in the chats willing to answer all your questions and a video will be forwarded with all our CLI news. Have a beautiful night and love you all. I would like to share a benediction and closing prayer. May the God of peace who raised Christ from the dead strengthen your inner being for every good work and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon you and dwell within you this day and evermore. Father, praise you for your gifts of unity that the Spirit creates in our relationships. You place others perfectly in our lives and inspire us as Christians to work together with the gifts we have been blessed with. When we look at this meeting through your eyes, we see your gifts fostered in us to further your plans. Father, forgive us for the control and the credit that we grasp for in these meetings while planning and accomplishing projects together. We confess that honoring you through our work is not always at the forefront of our minds as we strive for end goals. In the spaces of our hearts that harbor envy and ambition, we prayerfully ask you to make room for humility and shared credit. The church doesn't stand on any one's one person's shoulders. Not one of us can further your plans on our own, but together we can complement each other's strengths and cancel out our weaknesses. As a team, a unified body focused on the gospel of Christ, we can do great things in your honor as we were purposed to do. Thank you for your ideas that you spoke life into here today and for the courage of each voice that stood to be heard. In each one of us lies a puzzle piece, one by one, as we stand and speak 
and work. We see our individual pieces moving into place. We continue to strive for your will, piece by piece, until you call us home. Amen.